there is one last transformation of functions to look at today. They are the vertical and horizontal stretch of a function, aren't they? Yes, Tabojo. This one commonly referred to as enlargement, although it deals with both enlargement and reduction, that is the stretching and shrinking of functions. Now when a function is stretched by the same factor, both vertically and horizontally, it is said to have been enlarged by that factor. Depending on the enlargement factor, an enlargement can also be a reduction. Let's define an enlargement, sometimes also called a dilation. Sort of like a balloon. You can stretch it in both ways? More or less right, Cindy. Before we go to the graphing program, let me clarify something here. I'll draw a set of axes and plot an arbitrary point. When we talk about stretching or compressing a function, focusing on a vertical stretch first, then what we really mean is that the distance of the point on the function from the x-axis is changed by some scale factor. If we stretch or compress the distance from the x-axis to this point vertically, then it means that we move it along this line. What is clear is that the x-value of the point will not change. What will happen if the scale factor is, say, 2? Good question, Saboho. What we do is we start by measuring the distance from the x-axis here. We call that distance A. If the scale factor is 2, then the point will move to distance of 2 times A from the x-axis to here. That is called a stretch. The distance of the point from the x-axis has been stretched. What if the point was below the x-axis? Another good question. Once again, we could start out by measuring the distance from the x-axis, calling the distance b. If the scale factor again is 2, then the point will move the distance to 2 times b from the x-axis. Again, it's a stretch because the distance of the point from the x-axis has been stretched. In other words, the direction from the x-axis doesn't change. If the point was originally above the x-axis, it'll stay above the x-axis. And if it was below the x-axis, it'll always stay below the x-axis. It's quite right. What changes is the distance from the x-axis. If that is a stretch, does the compression work in the opposite direction? Absolutely. I've drawn that here. If the scale factor is less than 1, say a half, then the distance becomes half A and B and the points move closer to the x-axis.